Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome back to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Creation Kit through Mod Organizer 2 rather than loose in your directory using your data folder to store files and whatnot. So there are a few reasons why you might want to do this. The main advantages to doing things this way is that as I've just mentioned, the data folder, it will keep that nice and clean and tidy and avoid deleting files that you don't want to or overwriting ones that you really shouldn't be. It also means that you can load other mods alongside yours as you're testing them for things like compatibility and whatnot. And it also offers a very quick and easy way to do a sort of version history by backing up your mod within Mod Organizer 2 and being able to go back to previous versions if you have any problems and whatnot. So let's dive into it. Before I dive in and show you how to use the Creation Kit and other third party tools through Mod Organizer 2, I just want to cover the Creation Club content for those of you that have the Anniversary Edition or that have previously installed any other Creation Club content. So you may be in a position similar to what you see on the screen here, where you've got all of this content loaded up in Mod Organizer and it's just a total mess. So really you've got two options that you can use here. Number one is that you can just go into uh, sorting by priority and assuming that they're all in one bunch here and there's nothing else below them you can right click do all mods and create separator above and then you can give that a name so CC content for example and then you can collapse that and it tidies things up a little bit now if you would like to be able to take that content take some of it away add some of it back have different creation club content depending on the profile that you've got selected i would highly recommend that you watch my other video that i created a little while ago for a tool of mine called the anniversary edition content picker so i'm going to show that on the screen now and i'm also going to show another video for installation which might be a little bit easier to follow if you don't need to know all the ins and outs by gamer poets he does it far better than i did and he's got a much sexier voice listen to the sounds of my boobs and using the anniversary edition content picker if you want to sort of cut down on all the mess that you've got in your data folder as you'll see here and also that is in mod organizer so just briefly here what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to do what i would strongly recommend and that i do recommend in my video which is that you take all of the bsas and esls and if memory serves yeah it is a hundred and forty eight items for the Creation Club content, cut that out and go and store it somewhere in a folder, wherever. In my case, I'm putting it in my Skyrim directory. You can pick wherever you want just to keep a backup of it. And I've used a folder here called CC Content. Put it into there, get it out the way, and then use one of those two videos to use the Anniversary Edition Content Picker to then put it all back in a nice, neat way in Organizer, however you see fit, and use whatever content you like. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and used my Anniversary Edition Content Picker. On this occasion, for a vanilla profile, I've just used the Install All option, and I can just activate this here as if it was a mod. It will throw all the ESLs back into the plugins here, but at least I don't have a massive mess to deal with amongst all of my other mods and whatnot. So let's dive on to using the Creation Kit and also using third-party tools through Mod Organizer 2. Okay, so when you created an instance of Mod Organizer 2, you should have had the Creation Kit also added in along with the Skyrim Special Edition executable and the executable for the launcher. You'll also see Explore Virtual Folder. This is essentially going to allow you to look at everything that you've got loaded through this Mod Organizer instance on this particular profile, which is incredibly handy, especially for compatibility and whatnot. I won't be covering that today though. Um, but essentially you will have the creation kit already on there if for any reason it's not on there you can go ahead and edit it uh, and add it in yourself so if you click on edit here what you can also do is add other third party tools into here of which i've got a lot of them so if i just go to my main directory here you'll see there's a tools folder this is usually here by default as well and already contains a number of uh, basic tools that are used with the creation kit uh, as you can see, I've since added a lot more. Uh, you can go onto the Skyrim Nexus and other places where you can download various tools uh, for the creation kit that, that do things with uh, meshes, with scripting, 
uh, with just cleaning up mods and all sorts of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of the most common ones uh, that is used throughout the community, which is XEdit. In this case, it would be the SSE edit. So again, the way that I'm going to do that, I'm just going to go under the section here, click Edit, and then I'm going to click this little plus button, very difficult to see, click on Add from File, and then this should navigate to your special edition directory. If it doesn't, you'll have to go there. Uh, as usual, it's under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Special Edition, unless you've stated otherwise, and it'll be on the drive that you've installed Steam on. Or again, if you've changed it to a different drive, um, it's going to be wherever you have your, your Skyrim stored, essentially. Um, once you're in your Skyrim Special Edition directory, you will want to go under Tools, assuming that you've stored yours in the same place. Uh, go to whichever tool you're looking for. In this case, oh, no, nope, sorry, not XEdit. I want SSE Edit for Special Edition and Anniversary specifically. And I want to click on the executable file and I want to click Open. That is now going to add it. Now, there are other things that you can do here, uh, a lot of more sort of advanced options. I'm not going to be going into these today, um, but for the majority of tools, you should be perfectly fine just adding them into here. And then you can just slowly go through and add more and more tools and they will appear in the menu. So let's take another one that I like to use, such as Loot, for example. Add that into there. Click Apply. OK. And you'll see now in this menu, they have started to appear. And you can also add them as shortcuts along the top of Mod Organizer 2. So if I click on Loot, for example, click on Shortcuts here at the top right, and then I can add it to my desktop, my start menu, or I can do the toolbar and menu, and it will add to here, which is really neat. You can also rearrange these, I believe. You've got the, the arrow options here for up and down. You can move things about. And I believe that may also change their order at the top there when they're all laid out. So that's essentially how you add in third-party tools. Now I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and add your first mod into Mod Organizer and start modding through MO2. Okay, so before I dive into loading the creation kit through Mod Organizer 2, if you don't have it installed, then I would highly recommend that you check out my updated video in the description down below that will show you how to get it installed, how to sort out the master files for the DLCs and whatnot. There's also another video that I have after that one for Creation Kit Fixes, which is a community tool that inputs a load of bug fixes and patches into the kit, just making it overall a much smoother and quicker experience. If you are using the Creation Kit Fixes update, which essentially sorts the Creation Kit Fixes and makes it work for the Anniversary Edition, then you're going to need to take an extra step. Those of you that aren't using Creation Kit Fixes, whether you don't want to or for whatever reason it might be, uh, you won't need to follow this step. But you will need to go under here, go under Edit, click on Creation Kit, and under Overwrite Steam App ID, you will need to tick this box, click into this box here, and paste in the value 19461801. I'm not sure on the technical reasons behind this. However, checking the comments of that mod page after experiencing a horrible error message when trying to load through MO2, this is what fixed it for me, and this is what fixed it for a lot of other people. Uh, so shout out to that person. Hit apply on there, click OK, and you should now be able to load the 64-bit creation kit for anniversary edition and SE essentially uh, through Mod Organizer 2. So let's do that first. Let's click Run. Now you might find that this decides to load minimized or behind the Mod Organizer 2 window, or you might even find that the main window for the Creation Kit has hidden itself and all the other windows like the Object Window and Render Window are still there. If you get that, just hover over the icon um, down at the bottom of the taskbar and then you can right click on the main window and you can click maximize and you can you can get that back. It might be a little bit buggy on Windows 11, I've noticed trying to get to that. Um, but just in case you experience that, Creation Kit works in some weird and wonderful ways. OK, so now that we've got the Creation Kit loaded, we can go ahead and load up some ESMs. So we've got the Skyrim update, Dawnguard, Hearthfire, Dragonborn, as you would expect. And we've also got all of the Creation Club content that I've got in my Mod Organizer 2 folder, whether you've got it all just loose in the data folder or whether you've packed it up using my Anniversary Edition Content Picker tool, uh, they should all be there, all the ones that you've installed at least, and you can actually load these up as well. However, 
you will need to follow my the end of my guide for installing the creation kit where you make some edits to the creation kit inny um, to allow the BSAs to be loaded in the creation kit for any of this additional content. You would have to add them to the end of the archive list. Uh, otherwise, you, you may not be able to load them up. So just something to keep in mind. Um, just for this instance, to keep things quick, I'm going to click on the Skyrim ESM, hit OK, and just create my first mod. One of the things that Creation Kit Fixes does do here is it makes this so much quicker to load, and it also cuts out a bunch of standard errors I've found that tend to pop up and just annoy you. So this should be a, a heck of a lot quicker. Um, a, this is going to vary depending on your machine, unfortunately. Um, I've got quite a quick Ryzen processor, so this doesn't take too long. Also, something to note is usually in the same session on your computer, once you've done this once, loading it subsequent times tends to get a little bit quicker, um, which is quite nice. But we've loaded up the kit here. If I just go to Actors and I duplicate somebody, for example, just so we've got a change in here, and then I can go ahead and hit Save. I'm going to save the name of my mod. It should go to the data folder of your Skyrim Special Edition directory. I'm going to call this Test Mod. Hit save, and then I'm going to close the creation kit. What should happen at this point is you will find that in your overwrite of Mod Organizer 2, you now have testmod.esp. So what's going to happen here is we need to make a mod out of that. So I'm going to right click on the overwrite folder, and I'm going to click on create mod. So just be aware, if you've got anything else in your overwrite folder, it's going to include all of this in. So make sure you've got a nice, clean overwrite folder um, before you actually do this, and that the only files in overwrite are the ones that are for your mod, and click Create Mod. So I'm going to call it Test Mod. Hit OK. Now what I can do is I can activate that and have that appear in the game. So if I go to the bottom of the list here, you'll see it's activated. And I can essentially manage my files through here instead. So if I open in Explorer, you'll see that it's put a meta in e for Mod Organizer 2. And it's also got the testmod.esp. And then if I make any more changes to that through Mod Organizer 2, it should update in there. And I won't have to do the overwrite thing all of the time. So just to show you as well, in the data folder, you will see that in here, there is no test mod. Usually when you've saved something in the creation kit, you would see that ESP in here, it'd be all loose, but no, it's not there. It's stored within Mod Organizer itself. If you would like to know where, you will need to navigate to wherever you have your Mod Organizer files set to. So what your paths are, and you'll see these here. So I have um, under my G drive, I have a Mod Organizer 2 data folder, and then I have one for Skyrim Special Edition, one for each game. And then I can click on the three dots there. And under here, under Mods, I've got Test Mod. So this has now made a folder dedicated to it. And if I double click in there, uh, my ESP uh, should should display in there, but it's because I'm, I'm looking at selecting a directory, so it's not displaying everything. But if I navigated to there uh, through my, my file explorer, I would actually see that my, my files are there. Another quick way to get to the files for your mod that you've created is to right click, open in Explorer, and that will get to you to pretty much the same place. So now if you do anything like scripting, which is gonna be in another video, um, all of that will, in theory, get stored into here as well. You'll have your scripts, you'll have any textures, any meshes, all of that stuff should go into here. It is worth keeping an eye on it. On occasion, I have had some scripts that end up sitting outside of the overwrite folder, uh, especially if it's editing any, editing any vanilla scripts, and they might then need to get thrown in, uh, which you can usually just open up in here, and you can just do a quick drag and drop into the test mod folder, and it tends to pretty much fix it. Okay, so one final thing that I would like to add to the end of this video is how to set these up with cloud syncing uh, just to make sure you've got a good backup of them. So first of all, you can back up within Mod Organizer itself if you have made some major changes to it or you plan on making any major changes to your mod and you want to make sure that you can revert back to a previous backup of it with all of the files that there were, including scripts and whatnot and the ESP changes, then you can go ahead and click create backup. As you'll see, that will create a backup here. And then every time you make a backup, it will just call it backup, backup two, three, four, so on and so forth. 
and then you can always refer back to these backups if you make any mistakes or, or lose something then you've got that backup there. Now in terms of backing up the files from your computer I would recommend that you use something like Google Drive, OneDrive, Box or any other cloud services especially the free ones uh, depending on the sizes of the, the files that you need to back up usually with modding it's not too much uh, again depends on what you're doing um, but what you'd want to do is open an explorer as I showed you before with test mod get this directory so for me I just click at the top here in Windows 11 right click and copy I'm just going to close that I'm going to go to my personal OneDrive go to the settings here go to preferences and again this will be slightly different depending on whatever software you decide to use uh, for your backups add a folder I'm just going to click into the top here and I'm going to paste where it's located hit enter and then I'm going to do select folder and what that is now going to do I'll just do sync with Google Drive and that is going to make sure that every time any of those files change on my computer it's going to upload them to the cloud and if I ever have a big crash on my computer and I lose a bunch of files my drive gets destroyed or damaged for any reason at least you can sign into your Google account or wherever you decide to store this and then you can recover those files once you've got your PC back up and running because so many times in the past and I've had this myself in the 10 years of modding where somebody spent hours days months even years on a project and then they've lost it to just some technical failure and they've not kept a backup anywhere so I would strongly recommend doing that and that is just about it for another creation kit tutorial video so I hope you found it useful please let me know in the comments section down below hit that like subscribe button and the bell notification if you want to catch more videos like this one thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time Listen to the sound of my boobs. Listen to the sound of my boobs. Dark Fox, Master Mod Maker.